right? So same thing here, even though left hand side is one term, we can still reason it as um, in at the start of the third month, our pool of recruits, which will be R2, will be split into one channel. Well, of course, it sounds strange, split into one, right? But it is split into one channel, one and only one channel called apprentices. They, that means they get all promoted to apprentice. Yeah, so the equal sign still contains this notion of right-hand side resource is being split into the left-hand side number of channels. And right, this is the part where we want to pick up a new trick. And what is the trick? Each trainer can train up to, so let's sort of make that clear, uh, can train up to, at most, two recruits, each trainer, in a month. So, um, when, especially for first-time learners uh, in LP modeling, it is easy for us to just look at it and say, each trainer uh, can train up to two recruits. So, for the month of uh, for the first month, uh, T1 trainers can train no more than two recruits, right? Two times R1 recruits. It sounds like that. It, we want to, to write this. The urge is there, but it's wrong. Okay, don't look at the answer on the left-hand side first, but look at my, my yellow box here. How do we know it's wrong? Let me show you, right? Um, this is wrong because let's disprove it with a with an example. So suppose we have we have one trainer. All right. Suppose in the first month we have one trainer, and uh, five recruits. Okay. That means solver will assign 1 to T1 and R1 equals to 5, right? And uh, what does solver see? Solver sees T1, is it less than or equal to 2 times uh, 5? Is 1 less than or equal to 10? Solver says, yes, it satisfies what you need. So it is a feasible solution. And I'll present to you, um, the, present to you T1 equals to 1, R1 equals to 5 as optimal. <laughs> But that's not correct, right? Because the company policy says one trainer cannot train more than two recruits, but you have assigning me five recruits. So it's not acceptable, not feasible. So what is the right way to uh, express this kind of innocently looking constraint? Like each trainer can train at most up to two recruits. And the way to do it is to look at the ratio, right? To make it natural, we say that the ratio of recruits to trainer cannot exceed two. Let's rephrase it. Okay, so then we can write it ready readily. The ratio of recruit to trainer cannot exceed two here. So R one divided by T one for the first month cannot exceed two. This is completely correct and expresses perfectly the original intention. However, the only um, fear we have is, does this expression look linear? Because it's got a divide there, right? So indeed, if, if it is left as it is, it, it might be disturbing. So we're going to rewrite it and say that R1 is less than or equal to 2T1. And of course, if we bring things over, we, we can say that 2T1 minus R1 is greater or equal to 0 which is exactly the right answer. All right. So as you can see, uh, we, it is best to translate um, the original setting into a ratio metric form, right? Uh, so that we can rewrite it correctly in linear form. And this discussion is precisely to uh, accelerate your ability to translate in future similar sounding constraints where we don't have to go through all these uh, uh, mistakes or reasoning and we basically just write down uh, ratio metric constraints directly like this okay write this down first 
right? Express the ratio, make sure the ratio doesn't exceed certain uh, given quantity, and then rewrite it, linearize it, and we get the correct form, right? So this will be uh, sort of an example and to, to ease you into this form. This, this kind of a constraints, they are not resource limitation, they are not performance requirements, they are not proportionate constraints, and so we need to recognize it. Oh, you know, the reason why it sounds kind of tricky is that uh, it plays tricks on our mind, so we have to be aware. Uh, otherwise, it is quite straightforward. So in April, at the start, we have 100 employees. and like to sort of link us back to the financial application, where at the start of the investment horizon, we had $20 million. So here, we, at the start, we have 100 employees to be split. Remember how we interpret the equal sign? 100 workers is to be split into two containers, two categories. We don't know how many are there in each. Can be 50, 50, 60, 40, 30, 70. We don't know. So long as 100 is fully split into either production or trainer in the first month, which is correct. Absolutely correct. At the end of the third month, there has to be at least 140 employees. So we reasoned in uh, the financial application discussion that had there been you know the, the the following month then we can always define the decision variables and 140 becomes the source right so in our case here had there been a fourth month then the source of the fourth month will have to be uh, for example they are all production workers right so the source of the fourth month will all have to be coming from the production workers in the third month plus all the apprentices in the third month maturing into production workers yeah so at the start of the fourth month we will have p4 workers uh, comprising p3 plus a3 but we did not and will not want to define p4 because it's outside our planning horizon so what we do is since they're equal the quantities are equal we might as well say p3 plus a3 must be at least 140 and that's what is giving rise to this right so in case there's some mental difficulty which i appreciate because it's not easy to to help see see this uh but now we have seen two repeated use of this trick right where there's a requirement there's a performance requirements there's a demand of at least 140 units of resources the the, the workers uh we can think through this by temporarily but we don't actually do it in the model but temporarily we think through this as what are the resources we have at the start of the following month outside our planning horizon then since they are equal we drop that variable definition and just use the right side expression right so this is how we uh, get to this expression in satisfaction of the problem requirement okay and finally we say that all variables have to be non-negative and before we solve this well you can solve this but before we solve this now uh we understand the context now right we are given 20 wings 24 wings 30 wings each one so it's very um it's 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 really uh, a very busy workplace and factory you cannot afford slack uh laziness so if you ask me uh i would rather train up a lot of recruits yeah i will quickly train up a lot of, so i will hire more recruits at the start at the start of first month because i i know the orders are there i would rather make sure that i have enough recruits and although they don't resign it takes time to get them to mature to apprentice at which point they can produce more right they can contribute more uh, and then and yet another month to mature to production workers so upfront without thinking through uh i will be certainly tempted to hire more recruits at the start right because it takes time to mature so that i don't waste time and once i waste time i cannot get it back so i'll rather hire more recruits so if i do that then what's the downside the upside is i am more assured of being able to adhere to the schedule of delivery and the downside is the cost might not be optimal in all likelihood it wouldn't be optimal it might be 20 percent over budget 50 percent over budget i don't know right so uh and and that's why i hope you also appreciate the difficulty of 
production supervisors, technicians, and, and all the personnel in the production line because it's not easy. So running this model, which is supposed to be expressing completely all the concerns, constraints, promotion requirements, uh, demand in the number of wings for delivery, etc., etc. This model tells us after running solver what we should do, our hiring strategy. And surprise, 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 right? Look at this. Solver tells us, solver tells us that you don't need to hire for the quantities concerned, like 20 wings, 24 wings. For the quantities concerns, for the number of workers you have initially, don't need to hire. If you change the quantities, you might have to consider. But here, don't need to hire. Why? Because Solver says, the, if you don't hire, you also don't need trainers. And then you can deploy all the workers to quickly produce a lot, a lot of wings. Okay, how many wings? In fact, that's producing uh, one, two, 60 wings. A lot more than the required number of deliveries in the first month, right? And then in the next month, you hire a lot. You hire 40, quite a lot, right? 40% uh, of the workforce, so you hire. But they are not contributing right away. They are not, they're, they're contributing 0 0.05, which is very minuscule, right? The, 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 the sort of saving grace is that in the first month, we have already produced a lot of wings. And so in the second month, we have time to train up the workers. So the strategy exploited by Solver is different. It says first month, build up all the necessary obligations first. Second month, we can train up the recruits. Why don't we hire in the first month and produce at the same time? Because if you hire in the first month, you drain the 100 workers right into trainers and trainers will not be comparable to the progress made by full-time workers so in the third month you have uh, all the apprentices right coming from the recruits and they are not even full-time uh, production workers yet right but they that workforce is sufficient to complete the rest for the wings to be delivered in the third month so that's interesting because uh, as, a, as a sort of a human mindset, right? Supposing I have a lot of experience in this, I will be erring more on the safe side, hiring more in the first month just to realize that, wait, I need to deploy some trainers for that, right? And that maybe consciously or subconsciously slow things down and we have to buck up later and firefight later. So, so all these will be contributing to uh, inefficiencies and sub-optimalities in the entire production planning horizon. So running this, Solver says, do it this way because we told Solver all the operating environmental numbers, all the numbers, all the figures for the three months. And Solver says, in doing so, you'll be spending a million, roughly a million, 1.1 million in costs for salary payments. And that is guaranteed to be the least amount you can ever achieve while pleasing customers with the uh, you know ordered quantities of wigs. So that says a lot about what this model can deliver. Not just numbers, because decision variables, they are decision variables. They the quantities of which help us decide in order to maximize profits or minimize cost. And in this case, we reap a lot of benefits by understanding our operating environment and translating it into model so that the number crunching done by Solver can help us make judicious decisions. All right, so hopefully you benefited from our discussion here, both in terms of seeing how we can uh, identify LP applications, applying the tricks that we have talked about, uh, and coming up with the LP model. And of course, appreciating that the solutions help, not just a, a homework assignment or for exam purposes. This helps a lot in making clever decisions in reducing waste, in uh, many other things that are pleasant and desirable in business.